Peace, y'all. Uh, blessings to you on this fine day, this fine Thursday. Uh, I just wanted to uh, drop a little bit more on the songwriter's secret, which language. We're going to talk about the boogie. Now, a lot of folks that research the Illuminati in music today, they talk about the Rain Man. And we know that the Rain Man is a code name, nickname, Nick, like old Nick, a name for Satan, Lucifer, the devil. Uh, but we know that Rain Man is, is the, the modern day nickname that you find a lot of the um, rappers making reference to from Little Wayne, even ODB made reference to it, uh, of course, uh, Eminem. Well, I just want to tell y'all a little something about the old school nickname. The old school nickname for the Rain Man, for the spirit, because it's a spirit. Some say it, it's, you know, it's the devil. We know that in demonology, oftentimes you'll conjure something and it'll perpetrate like it's the devil. Um, and it's a deceiving spirit. So I, I guess what should you expect? But uh, nonetheless, we know that it's one of the, the key spirits driving songwriting today and, and, uh, and production today. Well, I maintain that the old school name was the boogie. Think about it. First of all, when we was kids, the, the, the scary ghost man that all little kids could be scared by their unks and aunties by if they was acting bad was the boogeyman. The boogeyman going to get you. And, of course, I'm, I'm a 70s baby. I was born in 1973. The boogeyman. Uh, boogie is a representation of a spirit. Look it up. The original terms and usage of the word boogie. So we got... Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the spirit. And um, for those of you who are interested in getting an entire documentary all about this subject, please do contact me. Leave me something in the inbox or something uh, to where I know it's not no game. And uh, if you just pay for me to send it to you, man, I, I'll send it to you. But if you want to give a, a love offer, uh, to True Yahshua Ministries, um, I will uh, be blessed by it. Uh, but again, we want to look at, in this installment today uh, of um, Unplug Em Uncensored, we want to look at the boogie. So I found countless references to the boogie in 70s music. The boogie is a coded reference for the spirit, whether it's spirit nights, the boogie nights, or whether it's... Um, uh, water demons, aqua boogie. Time and time again, you'll find the boogie used as this coded, veiled reference to the spirit. And it's as simple as that. We don't even have to really get down into that. Y'all know the songs, okay? But uh, maybe I'll drop a few more songs uh, for y'all and just kind of make this five-minute thing. Uh, some more songs that help point you to the witch language. If you listen to Michael McDonald's Sweet Freedom, now a lot of Blue-eyed soul and crossover rock, you'll find the uh, witch language or the songwriter's secret exemplified in, and I maintain that it was through the crossover that a lot of us experienced in the, in the early 80s where we learned a lot of Madonna songs and we learned about Boy George and we listened to all that type of stuff. Uh, we were indoctrinated into the songwriter's secret, uh, into heavier levels of it. With some of the weird songs that came out in the uh, 80s, following the super conscious energies of the 60s and the 70s, you had a superficiality energy that was strong in the 80s. And so you had a lot of nonsense, silly songs, uh, hey, Nikki, you're so fine, you're so, you know, all, all type of nonsense. And it crossed over. And so we know a lot of those songs. Well, Michael McDonald and the Doobie Brothers is one of the one of the earlier groups that uh, really had a black sound. And everybody knows Michael McDonald's voice has even been spoofed on Family Guy. <laughs> you know, it's a way he kind of trembles and, you know, you really question, can he really sing, sing, but he has a way he styles a song out. And if we can let Bray White style out a song, then Michael McDonald can style out one too. But I maintain that Michael McDonald uses his songwriting prowess uh, to describe more esoteric and creative ways of 
expressing the Luciferian worship and the spirit worship, the the, the Lucifer story. Um, what a fool believes is about the love affair. Now, remember, it's written from a Luciferian standpoint. It's about the love affair between the serpent and Eve, which we know we find this in some of your heavy-duty stuff coming out now. Uh, a couple years ago, I didn't hear this theory. Now I'm hearing it everywhere that the serpent and Eve had sex, and we know that goes back to Luciferian uh, hidden knowledge, occult knowledge. So what a fool believes is all about that because uh, he came from somewhere back in her long ago, you see, back in her past. The sentimental fool don't see trying hard to, let me see, trying hard to, okay, was that yet? Yeah. Or trying hard to create what had yet to be created once in her life. Uh, so there we go with the creation and the the attempt to seed her. He musters a smile. She musters a smile for his nostalgic tale, meaning he's telling her about some ancient stuff, some old stuff. The serpent uses wisdom. Uh, never coming close, let me see, to what he wanted to say. You know, meaning he was lying. He was saying a deceptive thing to her, only to realize it never really was. Okay, uh, um, she had a place in his life, you know. Y'all know the li look up the lyrics. Look up the lyrics. Okay, that's one. I told y'all about coming to my life by Joyce Sims, a demon music hollered at YouTube, and YouTube hollered at me, and uh, that's why y'all can't hear all of the songs on my documentary now, uh, the Illuminati and Old School Spirits in the Machine, Game Erica, uh, game, game, as in playing a game, Erica. Uh, so I just wanted to run down a couple of songs for y'all, some some very uh, quizzical songs, uh, such as Starship. You see, you can also, the devil is disguised as the boogie. The spirit, quote unquote, the devil is disguised as the boogie. It's also disguised as a spaceship. Consider E.T. The um, cover for E.T., you see, um, you see a caricature of, Da Vinci, wasn't that Da Vinci, or of the famous painting on the Sistine Chapel of God touching hand, touching thing, touching the finger of man. And when you see the E.T. cover, you're seeing a play off of that because it is saying how in code, in occult code, the next deception of God will come through the aliens. So you have a strong tradition of Lucifer as an alien even when he's described as or disguised as Semiramis, who came down in a space egg, who uh, we also saw that metaphor being played out in Mork and Mindy, who wore a triangle on his chest the whole time. But again, I digress. So Starship and Rocket Love are two examples of the same thing. Starship is about how the devil will be the vehicle, the spirit, excuse me, because I don't believe Norman uh, Michael Henderson knew that he was singing about the devil. I believe that he was talking about uh, the vehicle that would carry him, the spirit. They are taught that the real religion is astrotheology, which is a form of spirit worship or conjuring. And so they are, they are taught uh, that if they conjure these beings, these beings will bless their career and take them up. So you hear, uh, won't you take me up tonight uh, in You Are My Starship. And of course, the, the you is not about a girl or a man. You have Anita Baker and Angela Winbush with the angel references. And uh, it's rare for uh, a brother to be called an angel by his girl. Uh, however, if you just look at the lyrics, again, it's always in the lyrics. If you follow the lyrics, you will see this is a religious dedication, uh, especially in um, Angela's, way much more so than Anita's. Angela's was so much deeper and easier to feel. It was only by association that I went on ahead and had to throw Anita's in there. And I found enough things that, that lined up, but Angela really doing it.
Okay, uh, whoever wrote the song is, of course, who's behind it because that's that's why me and a buddy of mine had got into it when I first showed him this. Uh, he was saying, "Well, you mean to tell me Anita Baker knows that she's singing to the? Do they know? Do they know they're doing it? They don't have to know, but the songwriter has to know. If they wrote the song, then they know. They may know still, and and they didn't write the song. They may still know. So." Uh, the songwriter's secret, uh, you find all through your, your 70s jams. Uh, I'm talking about your jams. And I love TKO. I, I, you know, see, I, some, some of these songs, I know, the, I know the lyrics just from having listened to them a million times, DJing and sampling, um, and just, you know, being lyrically inclined myself to some degree. It, it, you know, I, I like to know the lyrics, too. So some songs I know the lyrics to better than others. And I love TKO. I challenge you because we all know this song. When this song comes on, it does something to your vibration. You feel it immediately. It lowers it. Because we're talking about, again, we're talking about rhythm and the blues. And it's an infusion of the blues, this blues energy, which is a negative or depressing energy, a, a, a depressing vibration. To depress you, sedate you, is sedating you. And so Love TKO, the music comes on, immediately sedates you, and then Teddy begins to sing. And we know that Teddy has some issues that would point to perhaps his dealings in secret societies. How does Eddie Murphy end up with a transvestite and Teddy Pendergrass end up with one? And, and you know, is this just a, a, a coinkadink? Or is there something going on where there's a system that encourages black men to deal and dabble in perverted sexuality. And uh, from my years in studying in magic and demonology, conjuring, in order to tear the veil and let certain entities in, you have to do more vile things. The vilest of things tear the invisible fabric, the invisible veil of the ether, and allow entities in. And that's why uh, you have Crowley and sex magic practices like the Babylon working and the Paris working. And I maintain that when um, Diddy uh, did the album uh, Niggas in Paris, the first thing that came to my mind was the Paris working. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but it did. And I believe that he's into that Crowleyistic homosexual sex magic. And um so was Teddy Pendergrass. But Love TKO, I'm, um, I'm looking at it as a philosophical song. Okay, some of the songs are philosophical. They are to give the devil's philosophy to you by way of smooth music and lyrics. And so you end up walking away, uh, you know, whether it's uh, single life or back and forth. Back and forth is a homosexual programming song. Look at the video. Back and forth. Uh, a lot of these songs and more is on my video. So again, if you're interested, uh, please do contact me. Uh, contact me uh, by way of this YouTube page. Uh, give me a, a holler, and uh, we'll holler back at each other a couple times. You know, kind of bet each other, and then uh, you know, because you you know you want to know that I'm 100, and I want to know that you're 100, and uh, I'm going to uh, get you this this uh, hookup. Um, it's for this, for this series, uh, but I'm going to try to give you as much as I can right now from memory. We'll, we'll go to, um, sorry about that, y'all. We'll go to uh, uh, as many songs as I can think of. You know, I'm, I'm looking at 15. I was trying to keep this one at five, but we're going to go as many songs as can come to mind. And I'm telling y'all, I, I have a notebook filled with your favorite jams and an explanation because there's many different ways in which it's done. Uh, I mentioned uh, Love TKO is one of the philosophy songs. I had them like in my notebook. I have them grouped together because you have your mind control delusional songs such as uh, Just My Imagination and um, Riding Through the Ocean of Thoughts and um, Fantasy by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, the songs that are directly designed for mind programming to take one's mind away and to insert what? Then you've got the blatant celebratory songs to Lucifer, like You and I. You and I, you know, and I don't want to say the same as I said before. So we're going to jump off of that one. Let's go to another one. Um, 
a, a great great example. Uh, my favorite examples, uh, and, and I didn't say earlier the, the Michael McDonald uh, song I began with was "Sweet Freedom." If you look listen to "Sweet Freedom," "Sweet Freedom" is kind of like um, "Soldier of Love" by Sade. That one is kind of a, a dedication song. Hey, thank you, Lucifer, type of deal. You know, I'm down with you. I'm a soldier of love. Um, she says, I have lost the use of my heart, but I'm still alive, still searching for the light. Talking directly about the Masonic Inception. At the endless pool on the other side. She says it's the wild, wild west. She's doing her best to stay alive because, you know, Sade is in that bracket now. But if she was killed, uh, the, the legend of Sade, oh, boy. Shaka said that she was told one time by some uh, music business dude that, hey, you're worth more to me dead than alive. You, could you imagine if Sade were, were to pass how her catalog would blow up ski? So Soldier of Love was touching on a lot of those things, and, and that's one of the ones where you need to see the video. Watch the video, Soldier of Love. And listen to the lyrics. You got to follow the lyrics. Y'all can make a parlor game out of this if you, uh, if you really, you know, are, are interested in this subject. Get you a laptop, YouTube access, and whatever party favors you need to feel cool. And y'all uh, sit there and y'all go through song after song after song, and you watch. Uh, Whoever two or more are gathered in his name, he is there. The more of you it is, the easier it is for y'all to tell the different styles and ways that it's done. Because, again, it's not always done straight ahead. You got examples where it's Lucifer disguised as another thing. And, of course, the most popular thing is as a woman. One of the first joints I open up the doc with is a, a song by The System, who are repeat offenders. And the system song is uh, the, the one that I highlighted was called You Are In My System. Now, you may have a friend who has an uncanny knack for naming these songs. Well, it's because their spirit really resonates with whatever spell that they're putting on the, on, on the music. And that's not to say they're bad or, or anything. That, that may just uh, be a testimony to how keen they were built to where they're picking up on this spirit energy and maybe you just hearing a song. But they may not know what or why uh, they like it, you know, what they like about it or why they like it. But they can pick up on this energy. And I have a, have a, a, a comrade like that. And the, the song after song, every song they name, it's like one, 100, a, a heavy hitter, a real which language songwriter secret old school 70s jam. And, and, uh, and a lot from the 80s, too. Uh, the system, we know, is from the 80s. Um, one of your um, um, new wave groups, which I maintain was just was a way to sneak in new wave was a way to sneak in androgyny into black men's culture. Androgyny was something you found in white, um, mostly white rock and pop, but new wave. Which we own, which we really we saw exhibited by way of Michael Jackson, the way he dressed and looked. But Jesse Johnson, Ready for the World, um, um, Andre Simone, The System, these were examples of new wave artists, and they all had something in common. They had that androgynous, feminine type of look. Prince, Prince too. Prince was was really new wave, trying to act other than. But new wave is really the new age was the new age. A way of indoctrinating uh, this new man that they wanted the uh, the lead artist to be, and it, by and large, androgyny is a big part of it—a man looking like a woman. Um, and uh, you 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 even found this in the early ages in stages of hip hop. I'm sorry, you know we want to be so near and dear to hip hop, and oh God gave us hip hop, to, and I understand that he did. We take the sample. We take the dopest part of the record, the, the highest energy, where they were deepest in their trance in playing and being in sync with one another, and we take that one part, we amplify it, and we loop it, meaning we play it continually over and over and over again, thus constantly hitting you in the head with the same energy, this highest energy, as opposed to there being one point in the song, they used to call it a break, where this high energy comes out. Yes, I've seen Black Dot 
uh, talk about this uh, in recent years. As long ago as 10 years ago, I used to teach this um, to my, my crew and uh, to my neighborhood uh, alongside my Nuwabic teachings. Um, and I, I didn't hear anything of it. But I, and, and I'm glad that some people are picking up on the aspects of that that are true. There are aspects of hip hop that come from our ancient culture, and there are aspects of, of hip hop that are directly re resulted, uh, uh, that are directly a part of a mind control program. Some say Project Sedgwick. I would go ahead and just put it along with Project uh, Umbrella under the Project Janus. Uh, program because there's cash alter egos created in hip hop. Uh, you know, you two Pac. You know, he was two individuals. He was a Gemini. Uh, he's a great example of a, a Project Janus uh, individual and the duality surrounding two Pac and Biggie. Uh, one from one coast, one from the other. One pretty, one ugly, and admittedly so. One darker, one lighter. Uh, one heavy, one thin. Uh, there was duality written all over that, and that that uh, is the number one indicator that Project Janus is afoot. Uh, but I digress. Uh, so we find this androgyny, this new wave sound, which was carried in with synthesizers. Uh, the natural music, the natural energy that comes from playing a natural instrument, which is made of something comprised of the materials of Earth, that natural energy could be sapped, reformed, and then shot back out um, to your detriment. And that's what the sin thesizer was all about. And I have to revisit Andre and George Clinton's song synthesizer and see if they address that in there. Because uh, that's where I, where I thought they were going. And I remember listening to it and kind of getting discouraged or disappointed and I cut it off uh, beforehand and this was years ago so I'm going to pick that back up now that we're on that subject but I digress y'all I'm sorry uh, let's stick to the script so yes the songs what songs well we got songs by the eyes Lisa. footsteps in the dark uh, the best the best one let's let's stick to the mystery songs footsteps in the dark do I have to explain listen to the lyrics listen to the eeriness the um, the melody and the chorus, the eeriness of it, but check this out. The dopest one is the one that probably bo boggled your mind like it did mine, like Starship might have boggled your mind. Why a Starship? What does he mean? He talking to a woman? Atlantis. You ever know a girl named Atlantis? Some of you may be indoctrinated by New Age and think that sounds like a pretty name. And I don't know, maybe it does sound like a pretty name to you. Atlantis, according to the um, writings of people like Manly P. Hall and other great uh, Masonic philosophers and uh, well revered Masonic philosophers and writers of the secret societies, their grand goal is to create another society that will be uh, to them another Atlantis. And it is what they believe was in the beginning and they believe it will be again in the end. And in the end, they wish to create a new Atlantis, which is a utopian society free from the poor, uh, from the um, um, undesirables of society, eugenics and all of that in, in full effect, and creating a perfect society where the elite run things and the Goyim uh, run their feet and do what they told. Uh, you, you, you have, that's what they're looking at is the new Atlantis. And you find this throughout their writings. So when he says Atlantis is back to you, and he'll always come back to you, you shouldn't have any more question about what he's singing about and what he's talking about. He has a long record. Um, repeat offenders, Isley Brothers. I got carriage songs on them and explanations uh, about the songs uh, and I'm you know we're gonna do a little heavyweight jam in here I guess we're gonna go to 30 minutes we're gonna do a little heavyweight jam in here so let's go ahead and, and, and do some more hard hitting now when I named uh, Mike for the um, boogie I know Michael Jackson is a victim do I believe Michael molested kid do you know we had a, a, a nice argument where I'm at um, about that yesterday you know not uh, I wasn't involved in the arguing portion but uh, folks got very touchy about the subject of Mike. We, we feel some type of way about Michael Jackson. And 
rightfully so, he was supposed to have been something divine brought forth to this realm by way of ancient bloodlines going all the way back to Jubal, the father of instrumentation, instruments taught to us according to Enoch by the fallen angels. There are bloodlines that produce musicians. That's why you often see families like the Clark sisters or the Winans or the Jacksons or Sister Sledge, Pointer Sisters. You see countless of uh, Johnson, uh, uh, excuse me, Brothers Johnson, uh, Isley Brothers. Why? Because this is a family thing, baby. And Lucifer wants the bloodline. He's been wanting the bloodline. These, these serpentine entities, these spirit beings, these boogie men, the boogie wants the bloodline. Rain Man wants that bloodline. And he will encourage you, if your mama was singing and trying to get into the business when she was growing up, you're going to try to sing or rap and get into the business too. And the further it goes down the bloodline, the more Lucifer is willing to give up because the more he's feeling like he's going to get. Because evolution it dictates you're going to be a little bit better than mama. Your child will be a little bit better than you as far as bad in musicians' terms. You know what I'm talking about. Let's not play semantics, semite antics. Okay. And, and the spell of spelling. Uh, that that may very well be my next one. I, I absolutely love uh, the spell of spelling, uh, breaking it down for people, showing them things in the words. Uh, it comes from writing lots of, of, of short stories and comic books and drawing and being an only child uh, for the majority of my um, adolescence and uh, just really having a fixation for letters, uh, the way they're shaped and uh, which ones put off positive energy and negative energy? What are the numerical values and all of those things? And I really love to look at words and see uh, hidden meanings and messages. So uh, some some songs you'll discern what it's about simply by the title. Uh, I've got some like that, Lord, Lord, Lord. I just wish um, that I had my notebook full of, of uh, joints. And I promise you I won't bring this subject up again until I got my whole list here for y'all to, uh, you know, for me to just throw the songs out at you, because uh, it almost feel like I'm drawing a blank now. And, uh, the devil is alive. The God be the glory. Father, give me some more songs for these people. We talked about the Gap Band, just like Adam and Eve said, you set me free. You took me to the sky. I've never been so high as he throws up the triple six. Uh, we talked about um, them. Um, let me see. Uh, Astrotheism in... Earth, Wind, and Fire, and the Commodores, and a lot of the album covers, okay, that's that's neither here nor there. We want to really get down into some more songwriter secret examples, some great examples, too. Uh, oh, here's a great one. This is it. Another from your crossover perspective. The, the blackest of black, blackity black, black ones. Uh, maybe we'll say them for the next one. But yeah, okay, let's touch on that. This is it by Kenny Loggins. It is another philo philosophical Luciferian tale. Like Love TKO is philosophical. And I'll Be Wrapped Around Your Finger is philosophical. It's about a philosophy. One changing over from the old philosophy into the new. And um, in This Is It. This Is It. And then I'm going to deal with love and then we out of here. This Is It. Because love will take us into the spell of spelling. This is it. Is equivalent. It, it's a song like uh, your boy Eminem's uh, 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 Lose Yourself. Interesting. There's one. Thank you, Father. That's one right there just in the title. And that's a modern day song. But you can look at the old school songs and you can see certain things simply in the title. Such as Atlantis. Or You Are In My System. Or Come Into My Life. I got coming to my life strictly from the title. Uh, then I went and watched the video and listened to the song, and it was Rap City. It was uh, um, confirmed to me that I was on the right track to Nine Mile and Max, so I kept that. Uh, so This Is It by Kenny Loggins is a, a song expressing how you feel when you finally come to this point where they reveal the secret to you. 
you've done all you can, you, 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 you've strived, you, you tried hard, now you can come to this part, your back is against the wall, you can walk away from it all like Dave Chappelle, or you can join in with us. Now you listen to This Is It and tell me that's not what that song is about. Again, where are you going to find this written in print? We can't be stuck in that. You must read. You must learn so you, are, so you know how to discern what's, what's jive from what's real. So you must read. But you got to know that there's things, there's, there's discernment beyond books. And that's where this overstanding came from. It came from me and another individual at the same time listening to It Seems to Hang On. And as we listen, we slowly, you know, we were listening with our head, bobbing our heads like this, hey, trying to get away from some heavy-duty stuff I was studying. And as we listened, we both bobbing our heads and slowly, just like in the movies, we slowly were like, like, did you hear that? We didn't even say, did you hear that? We were just both looking because we both knew we was hearing it. And it's, it's equivalent to like coming out of a spell, y'all, in all reality. And then song after song, you will hear, you'll hear this. Um, I hope I talked about some examples I didn't name before, y'all. I, I really do. Uh, I, it, it, it feels like I'm drawing a blank here. I have so oh, many songs. I just need to probably think of some artists. Uh, Shaka Khan. Okay, this is one of my favorite ones. And then we're going to launch into love, and I'm out. Shaka Khan, one of my favorite artists. The young nephew brought this to me, 13 years old. I was showing him the witch language. He was picking up on it. The Sarah Smile. That's another one. Sarah Smile is about Lucifer. Sarah Smile. Sarah Smile is about Lucifer. Again, Hall of Notes. Hall of Notes are repeat offenders because they they go along with what I was telling y'all earlier about Michael McDonald, Culture Club, Culture Club, y'all. You know, these were groups used to indoctrinate the black groups and the black audience um, into this new, weirder form of, of songwriting, which was really infusing them with the songwriter's secret. Um, but uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. This is it. And then Shaka Khan. Okay, got you. Uh, Shaka Khan. So the young brother, I was showing this, this uh, which language stuff to, he was really picking up on it. Quick, good. He asked me, he said, well, what about Shaka Khan? I said, oh, I am every woman. He said, yes. Multiplicity. She's dealing with duality, many, many, many personalities, mind control. That's a, that's an example of mind control. Excellent young man. He said, no. He said, I'm talking about ain't nobody. I said, hmm? Ain't nobody because there ain't nobody. It's a disembodied spirit that has nobody. That was the coldest one that got dropped on me. And of course, because it came out of the mouths of babes who have an, a, an ability to access their spirit man over their intellect man. The older you get, the more you rely on your intellect and the dumber you become. As children, you rely on your spirit and you can feel and know and come up with answers from simply from within and from without. You're drawing from uh, the totality of existence when you really get knowledge. So we looked it up. And lo and behold, after finding one with the lyrics on it, now you watch. If YouTube take the lyrics off these videos or change the way y'all are able to access these videos, we know we're really onto something. But we know we're onto something when coming to my life is owned by demon music. The copyright is demon music. I know because YouTube had to send me a list of who had said I infringed on their copyright. And that's one of many jams. And I mean, it plays like you know, I know one person that kind of just plays it to hear the songs, okay? I got some jams on there for y'all. Uh, Once Bitten, Twice Shy, about mind control. She's singing about how she don't like it. Remember how I mentioned to y'all how uh, some people can sing about how they don't like it, and that's sufficient. Lucifer's like, hey, just give me worship. Give me reverence, period. Put me out there. Uh, even give me your misery. So Once Bitten, Twice Shy which has a spooky sound to it already. Uh, I ain't forgot about Ain't Nobody, but I, I, I just complained about not being able to think of none and not a most high dumping them down on me and we had 35 minutes and ain't no way I'm going to keep y'all uh, this long. Folks got things to do. So, uh, again, 
Uh, ain't nobody. Looked at the lyrics. Perfect. Captured effortlessly. That's the way it was. Did not know. Uh, let, me, let me see. Uh, captured effortlessly. That's the way it was. That's what she says right there in case folks don't know. Uh, it happened so naturally. I did not know it was love. Okay. Let, okay. Now. Love. Okay. We're going to stop right there. Y'all look that song up if you want more. Look it up. Or contact me. I try to. I will get you a copy uh, of Spirits in the Machine in its totality. It's lots of good information on there. Lots of things the Lord told me about a number of things, including about Obama and Lincoln and Dr. King and a mind control psyop that's going to heavily rely upon y'all feeling some type of way about Obama getting hurt. But love, I digress. Can you see that? Love? It's probably all dark like I'm all dark. Okay, there we go. Love. Now, love is a positive emotion. Jesus said to love and uh, above all things, you know, to love the greatest commandment. Uh, but again, we're speaking a language that's not our own. Because we're going to talk about J and Hebrew and all that other type of stuff. Let's get deeper, okay? It's, it's bigger fish to fry. You, you need Yahshua's example, period. Okay, no matter what you call him, call him. You see something there? Now, there's a phone. There, there also was a, uh, a Ron Paul campaign sticker. Oh, a Ron Paul that said evolution like this here, like this right here, Oops. evolution. And it started with that evil, which was supposed to be love backward, which was so much mind fuckery, excuse me, so much sigil magic. I just, I just had to call it like it was on that. Uh, love and evil are the words we use to describe two extreme ends of what some say is the same emotion. I d disagree. But two extreme opposites of a spectrum. Evil is the way you say the word for the most vile and malevolent of energies. The phonetic backward of it is the word you use for the most loving, uh, excuse me, for the most positive and uplifting of energies. What a coincidence. That goes right along with dog and God and devil and lived and evil and lived. But evil with an O. You don't say evil with an I like Vincent Price. Only he says that. You say evil with an O. And that's part of why they can call these songs love songs. I'm glad to drop this one on y'all. Love songs. Love of what? KRS One told us about love's going to get you. Material love was the name of that song. Because the love that they're talking about is love of this world, the pride of life, uh, uh, pride of the eyes, love of the flesh, desires of this world. And that's the love that the love songs are all about because they're never about a man singing to a woman. It's a man singing to Lucifer about how he has gained these materials and I enjoy it and I'm thankful for it. That's why I'm doing it, to make money. And that makes it an evil song. Just like when you're watching the news and you see evil at the top of your screen spelled backward when... Ancient civilizations of the East read the other way anyway. Is there some ancestral memory in you that makes you see that lie when you're watching the news and understand that it's evil? And it truly is evil because you have false people saying the news and everything. When I say false people, I mean just that. And that's, that's a whole other story for another day. But uh, you have, um, you have uh, evil songs being passed out as the songs that young men and women make love to, their husbands and wives listen to when they want to get romantic. 
Babies are made to these songs which are dedicated to Lucifer. Song after song after song, love songs. Uh, listen to uh, listen to uh, Catch a Four Leaf Clover, but listen to Silver Shadow first. Listen to Sarah Smile, uh, with your third, with, with with your with your uh, spiritual discernment, because it is sound harmless. But you got to understand, Sarah is the Hebrew word for wisdom, and it's wisdom smile because we know the devil, Lucifer, as the, the secret society see him, he is equated with wisdom and freedom. So that's why you got, shine sweet freedom, shine your light on me. You are the magic, you're right where I want to be to keep the spirit alive. Come on, y'all. Do, do I got to sing it to you? <laughs> but no, uh, so those are some more songs, okay? And we didn't ran extra long, and I, you know, who's gonna watch? But uh, hopefully, the Most High has led you to this, and you find some benefit from it. Uh, you find me uh, to be 100, uh, to not be up here just serving a whole lot of sugar, honey, iced tea, uh, but to be sure that I'm giving you something that uh, I felt God gave me as a gift. And I owe it to all of you, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, my brothers uh, from other mothers and other colors, and my sisters from other misters. I owe it to y'all to just uh, share, you know, share something very precious that's been given to me as a, as a music lover. And as a music lover, this is something you should be aware of. I know people that th they don't listen to music the same way anymore. Uh, they They are able to spot this now. They hear it themselves, and they come to me and bring songs to me. Uh, Oh, my buddy Rodney, he brought me a good one too. But uh, people, you know, I don't know all songs. My DJ and producing background, being from Detroit, having a mother who was a musician and uh, coming from a musical family, uh, records were everywhere. And so I might know a lot of songs for my age. And music was always in the house. Every activity come with music. So I know a lot of songs. And I'm just saying that to say, I've been through a lot of them, y'all. Most of the ones you're going to ask me about, I've been through them. And there's a small percentage of songs. I'm talking about maybe a couple of things by Gil Scott or by um, Eugene McDaniel, McDaniels, the Headless Heroes of, Hypocr of Hypocrisy, a couple of Gil Scott Heron songs, a couple of Curtis Mayfield songs, um, William Devon, Be Thankful for What You Got. Uh, it, there were a few songs that I couldn't find. Um, um, what's her name? Um, I don't want to Alicia Myers. I want to thank you. I could not find wrong in that. But if you can, you message me and you let me know. There were a few. So, um, you know, maybe we'll point those out at some time too because we don't just want to point out the negative. But again, this is a thing in which we the balance has to come from that end. Because we think it's all good already. We, we, you know, nobody wants to think anything is bad with the old school. Y'all only want to criticize and chastise our young brothers and sisters, and that's wrong. But, again, uh, and especially to the church, you know, church folk, you're not supposed to listen to secular music no way. So now do you realize and understand that some of the most harmless music, like Frankie Beverly and Mays, who has the six-fingered hand on his album cover, um, showing and proving that his spirits are affected by the spirits of Hinduism, Buddhism. We know these are uh, the, the, uh, the Vishnu, the, the Vedas, uh, these the, in the Bhagavad Gita, we're talking about fallen angels. We There's warfare in the heavens and fallen angels abound and masquerading as gods all throughout that. But the six-fingered hand is telling you more about it than anything. In the Bible, and in uh, the book of Enoch, you can find references to the fallen ones and descriptions. And there's a particular king in the Bible, somebody help me out with that, who was a giant and had six fingers. So it's them showing their allegiance to the fallen ones, to the Nephilim, with that smooth, cool music. What can you say about Frank and Beverly and Mays? A, ph a philosophy song for you? We are one. A one world order song like one nation under a groove. Thank you, Father. Right toward the end. So I hope y'all can bear with this. We're going to take this to 45, and then I'm out. 
So, uh, yeah, Frankie Beverly and Mays, uh, your smoothest dudes, because remember, he was more, surf more subtle than any of the other beasts of the field, a serpent. Remember that. I love y'all. Shalom. Till next time. Peace.